So Gav, nice to see you. It's been a, a long, long time. Been a while. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. I'm going to talk about all things music. You're going to blow my mind with Don't your know. knowledge and your wisdom. Don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I ask everybody who's seen to come on, and this is you're going to be the the unique one, right? right. Because every person that comes on, I'll say them to them, how did we meet? How do we know each other? I think probably yourself is the longest, like the furthest back, probably. because it, w- it would have been high school. Aye, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, if it's off the top of my head, I'm thinking it must have been, I must have been about maybe 15. We'll be in the same year. You, I was a year below you. You were a year below, yeah, aye, so uh, I was 16, so you must have been 15. Aye, yeah. So it would have probably been about that. And only other person's Gav Hines, yeah. who I probably met around the same, same time, sort of right, time. Yeah, yeah. But everybody else, it's always been like 20s or your 30s yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, you yeah. bump into them. Right. But, uh, so we met at school, I, I can't remember, because we played in a band way, way, way back, yep. which the band turned out, eventually turned into Toy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we knew each other prior to that, no, or, or because I know that we were in a few classes together, but I think that was all after the band thing. Because um, what happened to me and Grant, the drummer, his yeah. brother Scott, we were in the same class at school, so that's, that's right, kind yeah, of how yeah, I yeah. got to know Grant. Yeah. But me and Grant started jamming, and Grant was still, I think he was primary seven. He uh-huh. wasn't even at high school yet. Christ. So I would have been about second year, and then when <laughs> Grant started in high school, oh. Jason was in Grant's year, that's so, right, so yeah, that's yeah. how they met, yeah. they got talking like the same music, mm-hmm. right, we need another guitarist, we'll get him in, I knew Martin since I was about three years old, Well, that, I think that was and the then connection. Martin would have known yourself, that's that, yeah, because we were in, I remember, was it physics, it was a physics class, I don't know what day it was, but it was a physics class, <laughs> and we knew, we knew each other, like, for being in the same classes and mm-hmm. stuff, but um, and we just sort of started chatting about music and stuff like that, and then like a couple of weeks later he's like, oh, you, you want to... You want to be a singer in a band? It's like, why not? Why I'm, not? I'm not doing anything else. Let's give it a try. I have no idea what the fuck it was doing, yeah. but uh, uh, that was that was it. Seems and like it does seem like forever ago. I almost yeah. when, I, when I think back to it, it's almost like I'm thinking back on somebody else's life or something. That's like, it, like it was. The thing is, though, right? maturity ago, wise, you know what? It was great fun. Aye, but, but maturity wise, I still feel like I'm that six, stupid sixteen-year-old. I don't feel. I, mean? feel, I don't you know? feel that different sometimes. Aye, but aye. then I heard a quote, and it was somebody said, uh, "Guy, guys don't grow up; they just grow old." Uh, <laughs> and it's—I don't know who said it, but it's pretty accurate. It's, it's pretty true. I right? assume yeah. it was probably someone's long-suffering wife. Probably. Aye. That probably said it, yeah. right? But. Are you from Denny? Yeah, Denny Heath. Right. Denny Heath. So see, grown up, when you're like, I'm talking about like, really we, uh-huh. were you into music growing up or was music simply just background noise before you properly discovered it? Eh, uh, I so my mum and dad were always, pretty much, always had music going. Right? So a wee bit of influence from aye. them, whether it be playing it in the car or... Aye, aye, so my mum, my mum was always like, any time she was cleaning, she'd hear the music on. And what, it was, what sort of tunes would they be listening to? So it was to? like sort of rocky stuff, so like Queen, uh, Big Country, uh, but Elvis, um, that Just sort the of... the stuff they grew up on, all 60s, 70s, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And my dad, he was more like sort of like folk music. He was a weird, he was a weird sort of mix, so like, he, he would like, Sort of kind of more sort of country western than folk, mm-hmm. so you get exposed to like your Johnny Cash and your Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and all that kind yeah. of stuff, and uh, uh, Simon and Garfunkel. And um, but on the other side of that, he was heavy into like Van Gelis and uh, Jean Michel Jarre and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you get all that weird sort of eighties. It's weird as well though because stuff. you do get influenced by it, but you, you do not realise at the time. Uh. See, many times I, I listen to something now and I go. That takes you right back to sitting in the car with your dad driving somewhere, <coughs> and yeah. at the time you're just sitting there. No. And now it brings back all these memories, and it's, I suppose that's the beauty of music. Oh, well, that's the thing. I still listen to stuff that, that we used to listen to on like car journeys and all that stuff. Yeah. So like old Corey's tapes and all that kind of thing, and uh, yeah, I, like Johnny Cash and all that kind of stuff. I still listen to that quite frequently. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get the kids into it as well because I like I remember that like, being there listening to it and. You know, the thing about those types of tunes was it was all about stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was, I think that's what engaged my brain. You know what I mean? So I remember with my dad, it was uh, Who's Next by 
by the who, right, so aye, like aye, Bob aye. O'Reilly and yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. when they went through that weird yeah. kind of experimental yeah, yeah, stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, obviously right bang the 80s, he, he loved um, Marillion's Misplaced Childhood, oh, which right, is like a, a huge concept album, yeah. you, you don't, don't realise that, and if you go back and listen to it now, and you mm. go, it might not be your thing, but what an album, Oh yeah, it's exactly. crazy, but uh, what, what age were you then when you discovered your own the type of music that you like, this is my type of, type of music and I'll tell oh. you a wee story right, so some people don't really remember, this is like clear as day oh. and it's Martin Miller right. that, that done it right, oh. so me and Martin grew up together and um, back then, this this is like when I was like about 10, oh. something like that, so Martin would have maybe been, we would have both been at primary school, he would have been a year above us oh. and uh, Back then, you're li- I'm listening to, I've got my tape player, ah, yeah. or, a, or a, a hi-fi, or whatever yeah, it was, yeah, right? Whatever it was, yeah, and uh, yeah. you're listening to stuff that you're, you've made copies of with your mum and dad's records, or whatever it was. and Taped off the radio. Aye, you know, stuff like stop that. It before he, and, uh, uh, and I can remember, remember when you used to rent a VHS? Yes. It wouldn't just, the film wouldn't just start, there'd be like trailers and all that sort of, 15 minutes of adverts aye. before the film started. Aye. And I can always remember, there was it was flicking through concert footage of something, I don't know what it was advertising, uh, but it was U2 that came on. Right. And it, and it was that was the first sort of like I'm like, like, I like them, like them yeah. as a band. It wasn't yeah. a pop it wasn't like pop music. This was like four guys playing instruments. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I quite yeah. like that. Maybe that stuck in my head. Uh, and then out of the blue Martin Miller comes down and chaps my door. Don't know who he'd got this from I think it <laughs> might it might have been James Bain. Right, I probably right? Right. Yeah. But he came, he came down with a cassette tape, a copy, Aye. put this in. Aye. I was like, what is it? He's like, just put it in. Aye. And it was the start of a Master of Puppets. Like, oh, right, okay. it, was, it was the album. Amazing. And I was just like, I don't know who the band is. I, I don't even know what this type of music is. Aye. But there was something in it. I was just like, I, I love this. Aye. And then obviously, as you know, progresses from there. You get you look at your pocket money, right, Mum, can I go to the shop? Aye. And you're like, what do you buy, Will? They're called Metallica. I'll just go to the M section. I like the I like that album cover, right? Yeah, I'll yeah. buy that. Totally like just picking stuff based on what it looks like, uh, and then you make a copy, and then your other pal makes a awesome. copy. Uh, what about yourself? Was there a was there a, a moment that you remember that you were just like, wow, this has changed my life? I, re- I remember it. I remember it exactly. There was a boy that came to because I was primary six or seven, right? And there was a new boy started at school. And he came from, I think it was from what, not far from here actually, it was Dennis Muir, he moved through to Denver, he started at the school. And uh, he was obsessed with Guns N' Roses and he gave, right. us a, he gave us a shot of Use Your Illusion Part 1. Right, okay. And that was it. From there onwards, I was just like, I was just obsessed with Guns N' Roses, man. Yeah. Like, I must have played that tape to death. Do you still like you them now? Oh, aye, 100%. Aye. No, not so much the, the, the newer <laughs> stuff, but you know, yeah. the usual illusions and the appetite for destruction and stuff like that. It's a weird album to get into Guns N' Roses on because most yeah. folk would be appetite for destruction, you know what I mean? But uh, that that was the first obsession. And then my brother had a mate, he had two mates, uh, one called David McCutcheon, he was a drummer, and one called David Priest, I don't know if you know David Priest, with any, oh. you know? um, he was a uh, he was a guitarist, right? And they come round the house and all that, and would be like, you know, like long hair and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I was just like, you know, these dudes, and the dolls, every now and again, they'd bring a tape and go, here, put this album They're on the hi fi. And it was, aye. So the next obsession after that was Maiden. Yeah. Um, it was, oh, what was it? A real live one, I think. And I just got obsessed with that and listened to that constantly as well. And then it was Black Album. Yep. And then it was. Oh god, what after Well, that? once you discover one album, you then check out all the other albums by the same artist. That's exactly it. Therapy Trouble Gum, that was the other one that just got me. It was like just that outstanding. Screaming jo- it's, it's still amazing. I'm gutted because the the plane in Edinburgh in October and it sold out. Wow. I, I, wasn't I, did, I didn't even know that. 30, well. 30th anniversary. I've played uh, the full album. I've seen them a few times now. Raging, man. I was raging because I was yeah. like, oh, that'd be amazing. Because Emma, I think the only time we ever saw them was uh, Download or something. No download, um, would have been Ozfest in 98 when they oh, stepped right, in. Okay. I can't remember who pulled out, but they stepped in to cover for them and it was like, oh, fucking therapy. But they were fucking brilliant. Me, um, me and Grant love therapy. And I think, I mean, I still love them to this day. Oh, I think Grant still does as well. But aye. Uh, for me, it was always the see the Fife era. Aye. Uh, 
I like some of the stuff after it, and, and there's no denying they still put on a great show. Aye, aye. But there was just something about see those first like few albums aye. were just something different. About aye, them. Well, that, I think that was that. It's like they sort of mixed the, the sort of punk with the uh, like your sort of Joy Division y type. Cause someone s- always described them as heavier than Nirvana, but not as heavy as Metallica. Like yeah, they, they, yeah. they sort of they, but they fitted in in a, this weird place. Aye. Even just like the, the drummer, especially the, the 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 fact he was playing dance beats Aye. over rock and music, it's, 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 it's not been done very often. It's it's weird to think, right, how big they actually were. Because you remember they, they, they actually like the one album of the year. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a, trouble but, but it's like they were on the telly. I remember that Brixton Academy show was on Channel Four. Yeah, you yeah, remember that? Oh, aye, yeah. and that was that was massive. Like a band that we were into being on the telly at a full concert, just like you name it. But it's a yeah. weird one, though. See, because people now yeah. have been brought up, you've got access to everything. YouTube, right? aye, YouTube, yeah. and don't get me, don't get me, don't get me wrong. I lose hours of my life watching stuff on Doing YouTube. Rabbit holes, aye, aye, aye. Aye. It's so good, but. You know, back then it, it was almost like special if you yeah, if you found a band that you like yeah and you found a concert or something you know MTV would they wouldn't do it you'd get your unplugged stuff and all that but yeah. as well but uh, it was cool to just find something Aye. because it was it wasn't just accessible the way everything is nowadays yeah 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 you play guitar I know you do singing but do you play the guitar as well not so much anymore no. I know you no. used to I still, I still I still have a wee acoustic that I jam a boot on I still jam a boot on the acoustic you know just strumming away in the house Cause I, I remember sing song to myself you know what I mean I remember years ago again back to school I can remember I'm, I'm sure it was yourself no. that you you done there was like a sort of music festival oh like that contest t- type yeah. thing in the school and everybody's playing the songs, usually that that the school has gave them. So it's, it's it's like just crap, crap. pieces, <laughs> just boring, boring songs. Aye. And I remember you. I think it was yourself that done a sepultura that song. His cow was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was the only one I could play properly. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> oh, I can remember just sitting like that. Yeah, aye. like supporting sepultura. And nobody else knew who they were. Was aye. but uh, it was. I'm cool. pretty sure it wasn't as good. He still as play it. Aye, aye, I mean, still, can I remember it? Probably not, but I'll, I'll figure it out in a couple of minutes, I think. But, um, so see your main influences when, so when you were first getting into music then? Who were your main influences? Was it like your Guns N' Roses, well, Therapy, Metallica, Maiden, all these type of bands? Aye, they I were think, massive, especially back then. Yeah, um, I don't know, it's, diffi- it's difficult to say, mate. Was there something like, were you sitting there like, posters and you were like, I want to be that person when I'm older? Uh, hmm question probably I mean probably at the time right when I was heavily getting into it it was probably Max for Sepultura to be honest Mm -hmm. was the the one that I sort of not identified with the most but it's the one that sort of spoke to me the most up until the point where I heard uh, Far Beyond Driven yeah and then that just like switched a fucking uh, light in in my brain which is weird because you know I mean they're not that dissimilar but I'd never heard anything like that in my life um, so I always, I always liked, I liked James Hetfield. Yeah. But I liked Kirk Hammett. I wanted to do le- rhythm and lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pretty much failed at both. Aye, 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 <laughs> right? aye. But uh, I loved it. It was Logan Mader. I thought it was just. Yeah, it was cool. Cool. Spark. It was and, cool um, and it's funny because I thought his playing was brilliant, aye. right? And a few years back, they they kind of got the original group back together ah, to re- uh, to celebrate burn my eyes aye, uh, thirty years or whatever it was. Academy, aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. I know. Aye. But they done a, an interview mm-hmm. where they actually sat like, how did the band get together? And yeah. talking to them all, and it's funny because he was saying that before he joined the band, he wasn't a great guitarist. Yeah, he certainly he says there was more rhythm than lead. But aye. when I joined, me and Robert were jumping between leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, so I'm doing stuff, and years later people go, oh, it's such a unique sound. He says, it wasn't unique, it's it, it's it, I wasn't capable yeah. of doing anything fancy. Yeah. But what he lacked in talent, he then Came up had to style. make up yeah, for yeah, yeah. in originality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then obviously that then just became his style over time. Uh, but I always just thought he was just a cool dude. Like, yeah, well, he was, man. It was the, it was the, whole, the whole look and uh, you know, the, the big chest piece tattoo that he had in that. Yeah, and he, and like his bunny jumps and all that kind of stuff, man. And he was still doing it all these years oh, later. Oh, exactly. Yeah. He's uh, 
I think there was some band back in the day, man. So you get into that music, you're playing about the guitar and that. See when Martin came up and said he'd fancied doing singing, was that the first band that you had ever yes. messed about with? Aye, you hadn't really done anything before that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. So it's how like, did you were, you... were you just a confident guy? Because I obviously do the pub gigs, right? Now, for years and years and years, I was always supporting somebody. So I played in bands, and when I was even doing the pub gigs, I was playing lead guitar and doing Aye. backing vocals. There was always like somebody else taking control. Yeah. And then when lockdown hit, I switched it over, became rhythm, Aye. started doing the singing. Yeah. Obviously, you, you need to be able to hold a tune, right? Aye. But it's amazing how much of singing is just um, the ability to just get up there and do it. That, uh, just it's confidence. A, and and lack of is what causes a lot of problems with people. Yeah. So were you just confident? Were you just comfortable because you knew all of us? Well, that's the thing. Because it's, it's like, quite a thing to just walk into a room with four people, aye. pick up a microphone and start trying to sing. Aye. It's, I mean, it's, it's or does that amaze sing. you now when you think back? I don't know, mate. I don't know. I've never really reflected on or it. Or did but you simply just I want to be in a band? And that was, I think that was the driving factor. Was like, I was absolutely, at that point, I was absolutely, that's all I did. It's almost like music the, the, was everything. the you talent know? side for everybody came aye. second because everybody just wanted to be in a band. Well, that's exactly it. I was, I was desperate to start a band. Yep. Um, and... When he, when he came up and just said, I think it was just that full of piss and vinegar at that age, I just went, ah, yeah, why not, get a go. Right. I don't know if it'll be any good. I know I, can, I, know I sing along with like, tunes in the, in the, uh, in the bedroom and but all that kind of stuff. nobody was really good. Well, so that's it's it. not no, like that's you were it. embarrassing yourself. No, exactly, exactly. And uh, I, rem- I remember walking into that room and um, basically, I to a room full of strangers other than Martin and just going, you oh, go fuck it. I recognise you from school or blah, blah, blah. Ne- never, held a, never held a microphone in my life and just go, right. oh, fuck it, let's give it a go. Um, and I remember which the first tune was, it was an R. Sepultura tune, it was uh, Propaganda. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the first one. It was, I, I can't even remember. It was just the big songs of that time. Oh, 100%. Right. So, yeah. you, I, I mean, everybody, like it or not, you done it or Sandman. Oh, I right? yeah. You done... Um, we, one did, we did one with like the intro Talker. and a ghetto blister. Potentially, maybe for whom the belt was. I can't quite ah. remember. But it was all, aye, all the classics. Refuse, resist. Yes. Sleeve, new world. Aye, all the ones that were big for us at that and, time. Uh, and it was great fun. Do you remember the first ever gig? I do, aye, it was terrible. <laughs> do you remember where it was? I remember it was, it was a scout hall. In a community centre Bonnie down in Bonnybridge. Yeah, aye, I remember that. Because I, I was talking to someone like... <coughs> um, Maybe it was Gav I was speaking uh-huh. like the other Gav, sorry, uh-huh. previously. And uh, I said we, we showed, we turned up, and I don't know how how we managed to get it, but no idea we, we turned up, <laughs> and Grant had a lovely drum kit. Mm. Right, he got his pedal kit, mm. uh, and it was probably the best bit of gear in the whole band. Uh-huh. Let, let's be honest, right? We had our guitars. I remember turning up. I don't know where we got it from, but it was a PA. Uh-huh. Got a PA, yeah. turned up, my amp didn't work. Aye, so it was aye. like, everybody's using Zoom pedals at the time. Just so plug it so the it was PA. like, just plug it straight in. Aye. And uh, all you could hear was drums aye. and guitar and I drums. remember. The thing I remember. The thing I remember <laughs> and I think somebody even brought a strobe light. The thing I remember, right? <laughs> it, was, it was fucking early evening, right? So it was it was bright light. It was right? seven, eight o'clock, it was, something. It was awful, man. It was awful. But I remember there was a kid. One of, the, one of the kids, they were on their scout uniform, and there was one kid that had, remember, he had hearing aids? Yeah, yeah. A little, a little young guy with glasses and hearing aids. Bit of and, and as soon as, as, soon as we <laughs> struck in here, I can't remember what the first song was, but as soon as we struck in he just went, ah! and he, like his ears were like but, bleeding, man. But I remember funny. though, somebody must have brought like one of those strobe lights that you just ah, plug yeah, in, because somebody's like hit the lights, ah. and it was just like, you know what? The, the whole place was like a giant mosh pit. I was that's like, that, aye. <laughs> well, that is the thing. It's probably one of the better crowds I've ever played. It, <laughs> it was probably <laughs> like eleven or twelve it's year hilarious. olds in that, and the the guys that ran it were like away in the office. Like, we'll just give them half an hour <laughs> yeah, until somebody complains about the noise that that's coming out of here. Man. See, obviously you're in Centralia just now. Mm-hmm. Toy went on mm-hmm. or it evolved into Toy, no. right? I was in. Defect. Yeah. We spent years playing alongside each other, and yeah. the engine room was a big one. Aye. Right. So, lo- be loads of people no idea what's the, what's the engine room, but Aye. for our age group, the engine room was great. The fact that Jason's dad 
I don't know how he came up with the idea, Aye. but Jason's dad decided I'm going to rent out, or whatever it was, this upstairs bit Aye. of pennies through in Falkirk. <coughs> yeah. And I don't know how he got the guys, but there was a, it was this, it was Davy from Tullabuddy that was yeah. on the doing the, the mixing. Aye. I don't know how much mixing was actually done. It was just loud. There was a, there was a lot right. of smoking going on. Yeah. Outside the smoking, place. drinking. I remember the guy behind the bar was like 15. Aye, aye. It was better. Uh, so, aye. I... What do you need ID for? Of course yeah. you need ID. Aye, Get yourself aye. in there. Aye, aye. But you know, it, it was a great time. And aye. I can remember talking to my, my girlfriend's daughter. She's 24 now. Aye. And I remember telling her, She's like, well, what did you do when you were like, this was a few years back. Aye. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know if it was a Friday or a Saturday night, but every, every Friday night, say it was, we would go along. Aye. And there was always three bands playing. That's it, I aye. said, sometimes it'd be my band. Aye. I said, sometimes it'd be your band. Aye. Sometimes there'd maybe be a theme, it'd maybe be punk bands or rock bands or whatever. Aye. But you would, every week for years, aye. if you wanted to go and see some live music, you could go to every this Friday. place. Aye. And you knew the minute you stepped in there that you would, there'd be at least 25 people that you knew. Aye. Right? You were just surrounded by pals. Aye. You could turn up by yourself Aye. and be guaranteed to sit down at a table Aye. with all these people. And it was brilliant. It was, it was, aye, for, it was, for, a, for a while, it was brilliant. And, and there, I don't know if it was me getting older. I kind of feel like it, 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 it lost it towards the end. But oh, that might have been me or maybe it was the place. I remember it switched to the downstairs downstairs bit or next door for a bit and it, ne- it kind of never really recovered there, after that. Aye, there was a couple there was a couple of uh, factors right so you know in, in, inside scoop but you know the 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 owner who was a uh, who was good mates well so basically Jimmy was a was a wagger right so he, right. he, could, he could you know make anybody turn their hand to anything you know <laughs> some boy and they uh, so just on a punt, and I think it was due to the fact that he was like saying, "Right, I'll manage your band thing to, mm-hmm. to like Jason us." And he was like, "Right, cool. So, right, what do we need to do? We need to get gigs, right? Okay. So there isn't really anywhere to get gigs locally. So let's just fucking stuff one." If he, I mean, I don't know what age he would have been then, because he, he just seemed like his old guy because he's your <sighs> pal's dad. But no he wouldn't idea. have actually been. He would have maybe been her age. Aye, maybe. Right? Maybe. Run but if a fifteen-year-old person phones up, they're Aye. not even going to take the call. No. If a forty-year-old guy who's good at talking, aye, talking shit, yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> rocks up, he can come up with some <coughs> sort of deal. Yeah, come on, let the boys hear a chance, get them in, and aye. you know it was a good thing. And I think that I think that was the general gist. So he went in and he blagged it, got the got the room organised. The guy who owned it originally, um, he was sound. He was a really good guy. But then it changed hands towards him, okay. and that's what happened. And the uh, darts tournaments became more important than this community that had basically been built up and was a guaranteed. I mean, some nights there was like 200 scalps through but the door the in that is, place. I mean, but I think there was, was a price to get in. Ah, it was like a, it was a couple of quid, five or whatever it was. It was but, three and it went up to about five, but maybe. when you think about it, let, let's say it was, it was you would go, go in there and you could be four hours. Ah. There must have been some amount of money passing mm. through the bar as well. Well, that's exactly it. So <laughs> no I, one person eighteen. <laughs> that, was, that was essentially the door. The deal was that the you know the door money went to paying the bands, mm-hmm. and the uh, you know if it was like a touring band or anything like that, it went to cover the bars, um, and the bar kept the bar, you yeah. know, and that was the deal. And for so so many years, it worked, and it was brilliant. It was magic, and you know yourself. There was a yeah. community built up around about it. All these bands sprouting up in the local area, mm-hmm. and it was just it was like a central hub for like music. Regardless of what style, because like you say, you take metal bands on, we death metal bands on, we punk see, jazz, uh, you know. Get see the other stuff. thing, I said to someone the other day about playing the pubs, Aye. right? It's a good, good paying job, Aye. right? Aye. But you show up to the pub, right? First of all, you're playing cover songs, right? It's not for everybody, but yeah. you've got to entertain the punters. Well, that's that. Right? That's what it's But you show up to the pub. First of all, there's no guarantee there's going to be anybody in the pub. Aye. If there's 20 people in the pub, there's no guarantee they're even going to be interested in you. Yeah. And it can be dead. It can also be busy. Aye. But nobody's been any attention. See, when you went to the engine room, it was one of the few places I can remember where, where you're playing in a rock band, you were guaranteed a crowd Aye. every single Aye. week. Aye. Or any time you got the opportunity to play there, you knew, you knew that you were in the plane to nobody. Yeah, but I think it comes back to that. It was like it was a... 
it was a the right time, right place, probably. Aye, but I think it was more about like the community rather than the actual music because it didn't really matter who was on the bill. You were going anyway because it was a night out with your mates. Mm-hmm. You got to listen to some music you were into, and, and you know a, it was, it was a, a safe, laugh. it was a safe environment for us types of people as well because you know remember what it was like back in the day. But then where, where, getting, where else would you go when exactly. you when you think about it when you was when you were fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Uh, where else would, would you Name go? Because I didn't have pot to piss Either that or yeah. you would have to traipse all the way to Glasgow. We exactly. couldn't afford. Well, that's it. That, that, that was a special treat, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, was, aye, it was somewhere local. But but anyway, aye, so that went on for years and it changed hands and then it became more important to put on darts tournaments and then that fucked it. Right. There was also... The, the Everybody was getting a wee bit older. There was some bands starting to split up. There was the, the punk contingent. So there was like, I don't know if you remember it, but there was a few couple of punk bands who mm. thought... Right, we're not interested in this metal malarkey. We're going to put on a punk night just specifically for right. punk music on the Saturday, the following night, and that just kind of it soured it the whole just, thing. Just for a few years, it had it. It uh, was it was great, and then it and then he migrated it around loads of different venues, and it was never quite the same. You know, right. we remember we went to Stirling for a wee while. We were in that Pharaoh's place for a wee while. You know, up the mm-hmm. stairs with yeah. the big King Tut in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like the downstairs beside the climbing wall and all that. Yeah. But that, I think that was towards the end. And it was like, do, you still, do you still keep in touch with the guys from the band? Still see, um, I probably see Jason the most. I've not seen Grant in a while. Um, I know he lives in Ireland. He now. does, uh, yeah. Like so. I keep in touch with Grant um, through, well, obviously, Facebook, but uh, I've not seen him in years. Well, I, but I, I did, he, there was a couple of times he came along to the pub. Aye. Uh, with he, Moira. With Moira. Aye. Uh, because uh, the last time I seen the two of them, they came through to Glasgow to see us play. Yeah, yeah, cool. And uh, it was just a night out for them. Aye, well, um, I, I keep in touch with them, but I've not seen them for a while. I've not seen them in a few years now. I don't know. Uh, they were supposed to be going to his wedding, but um, then the pandemic hit. And, yeah. uh, so that I keep struggle. in touch with Martin. I've not seen Martin since Slayer. The last Slayer gig at the. At I think I've seen Martin last year. Right. Oh, how's he keeping? He, he's doing great. Um, but I keep I probably a message from him at, at least once every month. Ah, ah. Whether, whether just talking nonsense ah. or talking about music or yeah. this, that, next thing. We've got tickets for Sepultura nice. in November. Ah, okay. So I'll, I'll, if I don't see him before then, I'll definitely yeah, meet up him with him. Then. Yeah, yeah. then I know that when Toy kind of finished, did you just continue? Because I remember Rennie, ah. who I used to play with, did yeah. he be then? Be, the sort of the band aye. change into something aye, else. Uh, we kind of evolved, aye. We, we kind of moved. Trying on. something a wee bit different. Well, that was it. I think we kind of got fed up with the heavy stuff and then just started like getting more interested in other, no genres, but other styles. Trying different things. Different things, aye. We were trying to move in the, the more melodic stuff. Like, by the time, I don't know, when did Destroy a Race and Brave come out? Um, 96, 94, 96, something around about that time. When that kind of changed the the whole landscape of heavy stuff, and everybody wanted to sing like Meshuggah, yeah. everybody started playing that stuff. That kind of soured it for for me because I, I still don't really like Meshuggah. I know yeah. that's controversial to say because everybody loves them. I can appreciate what they do, but it's just not for me. Um, so it's funny about that because I never got into the new metal thing. Yeah. Now obviously I liked some death tone stuff, some uh, Fear Factory, sort of, sort of be, but wasn't a corn person at uh, all. I always preferred like the Sepultura Pantera. I yeah. liked the rhythm and lead guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Machine Head had that yeah. as well. It, it is what it is, I suppose. It's just everything kind of sort of changed a wee bit. Well, that's it. Uh, yes. I kind of got bored playing with the band I was playing like, with. Yeah, kind of yeah, stuff evolves and then you get older and you start maturing, you start looking like to expand your horizons a bit. So yep. I, t- I took like a massive like. You know, maybe about a ten year phase of just exploring like Midwest emo kind of stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's kind of where the direction of travel went for the band. So like whatever happened, I can't I can't remember the details, but you know, members changed and all that and we kind of reinvented ourselves as this more melodic, kind of punkier kind of um, just tried something different. Something different. Just trying to write songs rather than just a collection of riffs yeah. chucked together. The one thing I remember about Toy and and I can remember speaking with Grant about this at, at some point, I can't remember when it was. The the one thing you were always really good at was you were a tight band. Uh, and Grant said that you, that you practiced twice a week. Uh, and that was probably the, the downfall of not only the band I was in, but probably lots of other bands, ones, uh, yeah. was that we would practice once yeah. a week 
and then if you had a gig coming up, you would maybe try and squeeze in one extra practice. Aye. But it's amazing, like two practices a week compared to one. Well, that, that I think what, that, what a difference it makes. Hundred percent, but you know, during that practice, day, so you'd get your three-hour slot in the practice room. Almost like always, every time an hour of that was just Grant, Grant and Martin playing through the tunes, just drums and bass. Mm-hmm. You know, just to, so they could focus in on getting that tight rhythm section. Yep. I mean, Jason, but he, good, he, he was always great. At guitar, but it, but it's know. good though that they actually focused on that, Aye. right? Because they need to be a wee unit Aye. to allow Jason to play whatever he wants over Aye, the top yeah. of it. That's exactly because. Right. Because he's playing on top of a solid foundation. That's exactly it. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. obviously you've got the vocals on top of that yeah. as well. And that was that, but that was important to us to be, uh, to be tight. You know, mm-hmm. um, we we took it although we were young and though we were stupid and we we're full of, like say piss and vinegar as you normally are at that age. You know, we did take the music part of it seriously and we we were trying to be as good as we could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you, okay, you're young. It's a bit of fun. We're all stupid. Yeah. You're still getting up in front of people. You mm. don't want to make a fool of yourself. Aye, right? well, that's exactly it, yeah. So you're, you're playing to the best of your ability. Aye. But I, rem- I do remember Toy being super tight, and I remember talking with Grant about this, and Aye. he was saying he's played, he's practised twice a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he, I mean, he was, he was a fucking naturally great drummer, though. You know, I it? always say to him, like, really see was. if you're ever getting back into it. I mean, Aye. we've obviously. Even ourselves, a couple but, of jams. But, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been a while now. It's been a while, aye, but, it's but been uh, good fun. we've even had a couple of jams. Right, what song can we remember? I, mean, I think there was even a few therapy ones <laughs> in there. Aye, aye. But uh, that yeah. was a while ago. I've still got that record, oh, recording. Recording yeah, somewhere. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but uh, you know, but it's that thing where, <coughs> or let's try, let's try this, and Grant falls right back into the pocket. Aye, I aye, mean, aye, and aye. he might not have touched his drums for, for five years, while, yeah, six yeah. years, something like but that. Aye, I mean, he was he was always naturally good one. Um, so see, Centralia was that? Were you in other bands before that as well, or was that kind of like because you've been that's been going for a while? Yeah, aye, so we're a bit. Well, so the wee man's he's just come up for eleven, so it was a bit, it's been about ten years, just over ten years now. So, how did that band start? Were, so, the the uh, me and me and Jason had a bit of falling out, right? And uh, I ended up getting horsed out of the band. Um, Sorry, is this Toy Jason? Uh, Toy Jason. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so we had we had a bit of falling out uh, over some recording that didn't come out the way that we thought it was going to be, and I ended up getting the fucking the sack, right? Um, and they ended up getting a new singer, right? So that was fine. So I was like a period about four or five years, just no musical output whatsoever. So is this you maybe like early 20s? Early 20s, ah yeah, yeah, yeah. early 20s. And uh, I was sort of climbing the walls in a dead end job, no fucking, no creative outlet, you know what right. I mean? So I started, just missing that? Well that was it, so it's like, do similar thing, kind of thing to yourself, you know, you start building up, right, I'm going to just start writing tunes and recording stuff so you Mid- start collecting about the things you start collecting the gear and you start trying to yep. learn how to do all the recording side of stuff and then um, I was at the point where I was like I was frustrated enough with that where I started like looking for like bands that were looking for singers and stuff it's like eh, I'm not the greatest guitarist so I'm not going to try and join a band as a guitarist I'm going to yep. go right I'm going to see if everybody needs a singer here's what I can actually bring to it because the world's got a million guitarists but there's not that many people that are mm-hmm. stupid enough to be a singer yeah. so so I started looking around and, and you know lo and behold at the same time, Davy and um, Andy had been sort of jamming and writing some tunes together, um, and Davy just on, on and the were one, they looking for a singer? Well, that's, that's the thing. It's like I think I'd maybe friended him on Facebook like the week before, and then the next thing there was like he was gone. Is anybody so know any did, singers? So how did you come across them? Though was it because obviously social media has changed even now compared well, that, to yeah. years ago? So. How did they put out some sort of advert saying we're looking no, for a singer? You know what it was? It was, um, was bumming about Facebook. Oh, there's Davey. He used to play in Fault and uh, Mad Madman's Absolute. Um, and I was like, right, okay, I, I know him. I'll just friend him. Yeah. And then he's like, then just sort of just ping a me- ping from a, there. Ping a message back and forth, and then he put his, put out a post. I think it was like the following week or a couple of weeks after. And he's like, does anybody know any singers that maybe want to try out uh, join a band? And I was like, I'll, I'll do it, send me some tunes. Mm-hmm. So he sent me some tunes over and I was just... Was it just instrumentals? Just instrumentals, but yep. um, but he he sort of demoed them out. Um, the usual MIDI drums and all that kind of stuff. Just rough rough cuts and... Um, just to get an idea. Well, that's it, yeah. And I went... Um, so I just took it and I just 
fucking wrote some lyrics and just recorded it and then yep. sent it back to them and they, they liked it. Yep. Um, um, so what, what instruments do they play then? So Andy, he's the drummer, yep. um, Garth, he's the bass player um, and Davies guitar. Yeah. So did they, uh, was the bass player there as well? Yeah, yeah he was. Aye. So, so it was the three of them looking for a fourth member? Yeah, so, so Andy and Garth had played in a band previously called... I cannot remember, but it was a band for back in the day. You probably would have played with them, okay? Because um, it's that you know, it's that community for back in the day. Yeah. Essentially, it's like we were all playing in bands with each other. We've all crossed paths. Crossed at paths, some point. exactly. Uh, doing the circuit around like Glasgow, Edinburgh, yep. you know, all that kind of area. Um, and that that was it. So I knew them as in I recognised them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I've seen you at gigs. I've seen you in other that, bands. That's all. And stuff. all that's all you and, need. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. And. Um, so I so I demoed out some tunes, sent them back to Davey and they were like, Yeah, hey, you wanna come in for a like a for a jam, see how it feels and that and I was like, Hi sure man, I'll, I'll, I'll it just come progressed in. on from there. And that was it, aye, yeah. So see how so it's drums, guitar, bass, yeah. yourself on vocals. Aye. Did they ever think about getting a second guitarist or were they quite happy with the sound that they were aiming for? Well, we don't aye. need a second guitarist, we're happy with the one. I think aye, I mean I think it's never really been I mean we have we have chatted about it roughly, but no no in any great seriousness. I think Davy's Davy's pretty defined on what his style is and how how he plays and stuff like that. I mean, if it's not required, well, then, I think, then why bother? I think that's that. I mean, his hero's essentially Dimebag man, mm-hmm. and you know, Pantera never had a second guitarist, and that's kind of the philosophy. You you never yeah. missed it. You know what I mean? So um, it's that. So we, I mean, what we try to do in that respect is fill out the spaces with the bass and maybe like samples and synth type stuff. You know, to, to yeah. Sometimes, I, you know, because I, I played years ago when I was in my twenties. Yeah. I played in a band, and it was it was a similar setup: drums, bass, and the singer, and they were looking for a guitarist. Uh. And uh, it wasn't even my kind of music, mm-hmm. but I was just like that thing. I, I was bored, but like what you're saying yourself. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to do it. Just, just I want to play a gig. Yeah. Let's, you know, have some fun. Uh. And um, I'd always played in bands with two guitarists, yeah. and it was amazing um, being a guitarist. See, when I started playing, and the drums and the bass are a wee unit, Yeah, it was amazing how I changed my style <coughs> as a result, because yeah. I don't need to link in with another guitarist. Yeah. I, I've got, I can float you can around do, here uh, yeah. and add bits and... It made me actually change That's the way it, that yeah. I play. As, as long as that bed's, as long as that bed's there and it's tight. But I, yeah. I ended up writing stuff that, had there been another guitarist, that would have came out completely different. Hundred percent, yeah. Right. But it was pretty cool. Yeah. So here's a, f- a question for you as well, right? When you joined mm-hmm. or started jamming, did you have the name yet? It no. So how did you come up with the name? Because you'll know yourself, right? <coughs> it's not spelled right. No, <laughs> you'll, know, you'll know yourself. <coughs> How many bands split up before they've even played one gig because they can't bloody a gig with a band aye, name? The name, aye, yeah, exactly. Aye. So, aye, the, so the story <laughs> behind the story behind the name is uh, the, this uh, town in Pennsylvania called Centralia, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like the inspiration for Silent Hill. Right. right? Okay. So there was like a mining disaster and there's a fire that's been burning beneath the ground for you know, decades, yep. right? And every now and again, a bit of the ground falls through, and it's just this big fiery pit. And it's like, oh, that's metal as fuck, right? So that was Andy looking into stuff as he as he likes to research stuff mm-hmm. on the internet, and he wrote the name down wrong. He misspelled it, <laughs> right, <laughs> and okay. that was and that was that was it. But then he thought to himself, it's like, well, nobody else is going to be called. Was there that. any alternatives yeah. that you're willing to admit? Uh, I don't think there was, man. I think it was it was the one that we just went, ah, you know. I think it was pretty much, yeah, that'll do. You know, it's got it's got a better backstory. So yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. You know what I mean? So and it's just stuck since. Then. I was on the band's Facebook page earlier. Yeah. So you've obviously got all your influences, uh-huh. some of which we've spoke about already, right? But see, with just from your point of view, you're you're front in the band. Uh-huh. You're a singer, right? What other singers from like pro, you know, uh-huh. um, famous bands? Let's yeah, call yeah, it yeah. that, right? What ones influence how you perform within that band? That's a good question. Like, um, so for example, I, I've seen footage of you, uh, and you can automatically go, I can see some Phil Anselmo in there, uh, I can see this, I can see that. Is there ones that come to mind that, I don't mean that you're purposely copying them, yeah, but yeah, yeah. ones that you, you watch them and you go, I like the way they 
command the stage. I like the way they move about. I like yeah. what they do when the guy's doing the solo. I like how they get crowd participation going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there ones that you think of that you go... Like front I, I, I don't yeah. mean you automatically go, I'm copying them. Yeah. But the, what, who, who is influencing you as a front person? Yeah, I mean, like, to, who I'd like to be like. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, rather, but just ones yeah. that you... Is there ones that you go... The way they perform, I would like to take a bit of that and put it into my own performance within my band. That's weird, man. I don't really think it in terms like that. You know what I mean? Um, I, there, there, there's, there's singers and frontmen that I look up to and go, "Fuck me, that's amazing." You mm. know what I mean? What a guy! That guy, you know, blows it away every time. Like uh, my, my main sort of my main squeeze when it comes to frontmen is uh, I don't know if you if you know the band Norma Jean. Uh, their singer Corey, man, he, he's a fucking just a born front man, and yep. he's just he, his style and his lyric writing and just everything about it. I mean, it, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's just something that, that sits with me, yeah. and I'm just like, that's fucking amazing. That well, inspires you. Well, that, that's essentially it, man. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I love what he does um, with like mixture of the heaviness and the, and the melody and stuff like that. Um, other others. Other singers that I kind of look up to, it's not, not so much a front man as such. Maynard James Keenan, the tool and Perfect Circle and Pussy mm-hmm. and all that. He, as for like lyric writing and melody and just overall tone of voice and all mm-hmm. that stuff, he's like one of my absolute absolute heroes. Um, there's a lesser known band from back in the day called Nothing Face from Baltimore. Their their singer um, Matt Holt, um, who's a guy that back in the day. Folk used to tell me you sound like him, mm-hmm. you know. But they're they, like, they were. Stop it, but, no, but, but the thing is, though, it's like they were a massive sort of influence on me yep. back in the day, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'll take that, man." Right. But I get I get comments for um, I get comments for other bands going, uh, "Yeah, you sound like the guy for the Haunted." Um, it's like, okay, I'll take that one as well. Um, but people are taking enough time to just listen. Aye, but I think you know when it comes to the performance side of stuff, man, I'm never really 100 percent comfortable performing, but. You know, I never, I'm never trying to be anything other than me. I'm past that point. You, you've got to the point where you, you know what you're capable of, and you go out and you do it. Well, that's and, it. And you and know I'm what's no, required of you. And I'm not trying to emulate anybody else's voice either anymore. Mm. You know, when I first started, like, well, when, it, t- it takes a while to find your own voice, your own style. I think, I think it's just a case of stop trying to be like somebody else mm. and try to learn. It's like try, any other instrument, right? You, you have to learn what you're capable of doing with mm. that instrument. So it comes, to, it comes down to that, but. Like back in the day when we first started jamming, m- my idol was Max F- Fisepo Tura, yeah. so that's who I tried to sound like. Yeah. And more often than not, you blow the arse out of your voice trying to do that because you don't, one, that you don't, you don't have <laughs> Max's throat. Yep. You know, you don't have his physiology there. So you know, I suppose it wasn't until joining in with the Centralia guys where I just kind of, I know, I, I kind of stopped trying to be something that I wasn't. Well, this kind of leads, I mean? in, leads into the next question, right? So. You've been going for about ten years, roughly. Right. So by this point, the four of you will be comfortable as a group on stage. Yeah. Right. You'll be be able to read each other. Ah. Right. You know what everybody's going to do. Right. But I remember back in the day, there was always this big thing about seeing you're in the practice, you're doing your practicing. Yeah. And you're obviously just trying to copy the bands that you watch and listen to Ah. like that. But there was always this big thing. I can always remember it being like uh, like when you start playing you, you can't just stand and look at your guitar you, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got to to jump about and you've uh, got to do this that uh, and the next thing uh, and obviously you know it takes time because first of all it, you know you're looking at it probably because you're not that great a guitarist yeah, or yeah, yeah. bass player or whatever and, and then you're maybe not comfortable yeah. and over time it kind of gets going so see even when you go to see like a, a band now mm-hmm. what is it you like about bands and is, what is it you don't like about bands? And what I mean by that, right, is see, I spoke with, with someone, I think it was just the previous episode. Now, we grew up and there was a right bang in the 90s, yeah. Britpop, yeah. right? It was everywhere, Aye. right? And I wasn't into it yeah. because I like the hard rock, heavy metal, yeah. right? So that, it didn't interest me in the slightest. Aye. But one thing. I looked at was when they were on stage. Yeah. See when you looked at Oasis, well, out their tits. Travis, <laughs> Stereo for all these bands, yeah. right? Now they might, if if you like that kind of music, yeah. they, they might have 
you know, play, yeah, play, play, playing wise, they yeah. were probably sounding great. Might uh, have even been sounding better than the album. Uh, they looked like they wanted to be anywhere other than on stage, yeah. right? And then you flip to mm. Iron Maiden, yeah. Metallica, Pantera. I mean, they are having the time of their life yeah. on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They're interacting with the crowd. Yeah. They're singing along. They're jumping about. Yeah. They're, they're, they are just loving it. Uh. And when I was playing the band, I always wanted to be like that because the other one just looked so unbelievable. Yeah. Now, obviously, if, you, if Oasis had walked out and started jumping about, it wouldn't have made sense, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's obviously like different things for different times yeah. and that, but I mean, personally, the reason, I think part of the reason I was attracted to heavy metal, there's an energy. Ah, that you didn't get live. in any other style. Now, yeah. the other styles, sound, they might sound great live. Yeah. But it's still missing something now. Yeah. It's different if you're playing a certain song and you've got fifty thousand people singing back to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That doesn't matter if it's Brit pop, yeah. if it's heavy metal. Yeah, there's something in that, that that's amazing. But for the songs where it's not Aye. like that, I just feel like it, there's something missing that I found in heavy metal. Aye. and it was this total passion or energy. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is that? I think I think that I think that's right, and I think that's. That, that's probably what attracted me here back in the day when I was young. But was do like, you see yourselves all these years later when you're, play, you're playing your front in yeah. Centralia? I don't even, even mean that you're doing it on purpose, but you must try and get that same energy because that's what think, you grew yeah, up loving. Yeah, and I, the same I mean, for the other guys as well. The, I don't think, like, for, well, I can only speak for me, I can't speak for the other boys, but um, for me personally, it's, 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 it's less about trying to do a performance it's more you know it's kind of it's kind of weird there's like you kind of zone out it's more for it's more like a like a release for me mm-hmm. in, a, in a way it's like um i kind of go into a, my own wee world when, yeah. when i'm when i'm performing and it is i think it is just it's like that. you're it's just like, focused on the job at hand i think it's just that it's like but it's almost it's like that primal scream kind of therapy almost you know what yeah. i mean it's like um you know, I, I want to put on a good show and I want to do a good job, but it's more important to me to, to to get across the, the energy, like you say, yeah. of, the, of the music. Or do you find that that just naturally, over naturally. time, comes around? I think it's just it's just naturally, you know. And you've how, just got more comfortable, you can read a crowd now, you, <sighs> you, you'll do something one gig and you'll go, I done that. That worked well. I'll do that in the next gig. Yeah. We'll do something that didn't work too I well. Mean, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm trial not, and error. I'm not. I'm not the most talented frontman. Let's put it that way. My stage banter's fucking chronic <laughs> most times. But I, I well, you know, has been at least. I mean, so, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, when, sometimes when I'm watching other bands, I'll be like, "Oh, that was really fucking good. I'm having that the next time we play." You uh-huh. know what I mean? Um, because I've never been a good fucking shit talker from from the stage. Um, I sometimes I think you you either got that or you don't. Oh yeah, it comes it comes naturally. And sometimes I mean? if you don't have that, it's better to just get on the music. The, the best the best gigs that I've ever done, I always say this to anybody, is the ones where I've turned up. And I thought this is going to be an absolute fucking howler. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, look at the state of the stage. Look at the state of the fucking PA. The fucking this, this venue fucking sucks, and yep. we're going to go down like a lead balloon. And those ones where you switch off your fucking conscious brain and you just fucking do it. You just yep. do the job, and um, they're usually the, the ones you do the best because yep. you're not thinking about it. You're just being there in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of that's what I kind of try and. Do it's like you block it out, you know what I mean, and you just do the music, and you just try and express what you want the music to express, yeah. and let it. Oh, it's fucking sounds wanky as fuck, but you let it sort of come come but through. But see, when you, know you see other people enjoying it, ah, well, that's it exactly. Then you're doing something correct. Yeah, I mean, but the, the gauge of any good gig is how many t-shirts you sell yeah. after watching them. Yeah. But so see, you've clearly done something that that anything anytime somebody come up saying, "Go, here's some money," mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That that's that's a that's a result. You know so I mean? here's one for you, right? You've obviously been playing with them for about ten years, but yeah. you're doing gigs long before that, right? Yeah. Do you get nervous yeah. b- before a gig now, or is it a, a weird nervous as in? I want to get on there and get going. Uh, oh, aye, well, aye. What about the other guys? Do, does anybody have like anxiety? Like, do they do they get no, nervous no, or are they? No, they, 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 they want on, man. I mean, it's like one of those ones where it's like we've been at it that fucking long that you know if you if you're still nervous by now, you know you probably should get another hobby. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, aye, I mean, that's the one. Yeah. I, I've been doing the, the pub gigs for a long, long time. If anything, though, that must be harder because you're on your own. 
you know, you've not got a band well, to back you up. And then I think that's why I, for a long time I didn't do it solo. Yeah. Because even if you're jamming with one other person, yeah. it's like a wee, there's a wee bit of teamwork Aye. going on. Yeah, there's yeah. someone else to rely on. Aye. I wouldn't say it's nervous as in I know that the minute I start playing, yeah. I am capable of doing of, what, you of need doing to what do. I need uh, to do uh, uh, to entertain yeah. everybody. But there is a, a nervous sort of feeling that comes across. I think, but it's not as in it's not going to control you to the point. Yeah. I, I'm not going to be able to do this. Uh, I know that I'm able to do this. Uh, it might just be depending on the type of crowd that's in yeah. the pub. Yeah. I think it's more, rather than nervousness, like sort of lack, like self doubt. I think it's more just anxi- not anxiety, but like adrenaline. So like your adrenaline starts pumping, yeah. and that it's that sort of that nervous energy. But it's not like you're no nervous about what you're capable. It's weird though, because I, I watched an interview. I think it was Metallica. Yeah, they've been going forty plus years. Yeah, and they said that they still get yeah. nervous before going on stage, but it's not a a thrown up in the bucket. I, I, I can't do this. Nervous. Aye. It's a a nervous, I want to get out there. Ah, it's, an, it's a, the adrenaline And the minute the yeah. first note hits, yeah. I mean, they all know that they're more than capable of yeah. doing what they need to do. Maybe no Lars. You know. <laughs> well, we'll not talk about that. <laughs> you know, <coughs> some are more capable hey, than others. Let's as long as he's it. got that china to disguise <coughs> everything uh, else. Jesus. He's fine. Uh, so, you're playing in the band. Mm-hmm. How do you go about writing songs? And what I mean by that is, do you go away and do people come in with a, I've got an idea, I've got like half a song yeah. kind of written, or do you show up with nothing yeah. in your practice and you all contribute to, to create this? Is it a bit of both? How do you go about songwriting? It's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit sort of mixed bag, man. It's, um, Davey, Davey's normally comes up with the kernel, the idea, you know, riff-wise. So mm-hmm. I really, when we first started out, it was like Davey was writing like a machine. Yep. Riff, 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 and then we'd sort of piece it together into songs off the back of that. And then we've kind of migrated towards a more sort of organic, jammed kind of way coming up with the stuff. So we'll typically we'll go into a practice space and we'll be in there for God knows how many hours. Um, and we'll play through some tunes, get warmed up in that, and then we'll go into like writing mode. Mm-hmm. And it'll be a case of Davey and, Davey and, uh, and Andy are basically your main sort of songwriters music wise. Um, they'll be sort of jamming away and then they'll sync up, you know, mm-hmm. you, somebody will do something then they'll sync up and they'll that, like... That's working, let's do and more of that, let's and do we're less kind of that. Of, and we're kind of self, self-producing as, as we're going and going, mm-hmm. right, usually we've got like a wee recorder going, you know, just capture, just capture. everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that will then go through and go, right, that really worked, that's an idea, that we can develop that. Scrap this. And then we'll cycle back round and then do that and develop it out more. Um, so, so see when, so they're kind of like, so the, the music comes first. Always, uh, right? yeah. So, see with you being the singer, mm-hmm. are the lyrics left up to you or do others contribute? Well, yeah, nobody's ever really paid any interest in doing it. So. The reason I'm asking is, is I had um, someone on a, uh, I don't know if you've heard of a band called The Colony. Yes, I, yeah. So I, I had yeah. Ar- Aaron the guitarist. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, he yeah. is on two episodes ago. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. And it blew my mind, right, yeah. because his brother Ricky's on drums. Yes, I. And he said that Ricky and the singer right. together come up with the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. And I I just, for some reason, just expected it to be the singer. The I'd, singer, that's a job, yeah. But I, I, know, I, know, I, know I don't mean a drummer's not capable of I, doing that. I know plenty of bands that are like that, where it's but like... It's also... There is an ego thing that it might be you don't so you don't play another instrument. Yeah. You you could be very precious as in no no this is my area. Nobody else is allowed yeah, to step yeah. on it. Yeah. But are they quite? They, I'm assuming the, the other three guys just trust you. Gav knows what he's doing. Let him write the lyrics. Aye. See if they're if you're if you're bailing out the lyrics and would they be comfortable in saying listen? I don't think that that line of. Aye, you're going down as working like, why don't you try this that the aye. next thing um, I don't think it's, it's never really ever done in that amount of detail because normally I'm, I'm writing the lyrics <coughs> after the music's kind of complete and the song's done mm-hmm. and that kind of pisses them off because I'll normally I'll start developing the lyrics and I'll go this bit isn't really working anymore can we maybe change <laughs> it and extend it and they're yeah, like yeah, yeah. this is six months after the tune's been like played and ingrained into their brains yeah. and they're like 
no, that's just the way it is. And it's like, well, we, and we sort of back and forth, and then we are, we eventually come to like the consensus. Of, right, okay, this works. Um, so that's that's been up until uh, the album. The, the last sort of we were doing this sort of single. A single releases yep. rather than doing an album just focusing on one song and I just like every yeah, couple yeah. Every, every couple of months chucking out, uh, chucking out a couple of tunes and stuff um, trying to get at least a few out per, per year um, it's a lot harder now that we're older and we've got jobs and families yeah, yeah. and all that shit so um, but we've kind of taken a different approach especially with the lyrics stuff a lot of the time I'm writing the lyrics in the studio now mm-hmm. which is kind of weird so like I'm, I'm prepping as much as I can before going to the studio but then it's kind of me and Stephen that are like figuring it out right what works what doesn't work let's try and massage and create what the tune should be so at the end if you write them like write the lyrics down here's the idea verse chorus blah 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 uh, did, did they ever read through it that, you know it's that I have no idea <laughs> I don't know what do, what do they actually <coughs> I mean, what, I mean I'm saying what do they think as yeah. in do they ever just read through it and go I like what you're Singing about here, I, I, or, or are they quite happy to just that is just your department? I, I know it's weird. I, I, it's weird, man. It is weird because I, I'm not, I'm not, not open to somebody else having an influence, or somebody wants to come up with some lines and stuff like that. You know, You're or, always or open to hearing it. I was like, I don't give a shit because whilst they're writing the tunes, I'm always there in the background going, "That shit, change that. <laughs> no, do more of that. You know, kind of getting that sort of getting my neb in because I can't help myself because yep. I've got a fucking ego. You know, yep. but um, yeah, it's kind of. Uh, I, I, I sort of inject myself into their process so I'm, I'm open to them coming back away but nobody's ever really paid much so see your lyrics as well right see if I, if I was to go and read them without the music yeah would it make sense to me what you're singing about as in would it, would it tell a story or is it quite sort of vague as in it could mean anything or is it yeah. like some people write it's almost like a wee snapshot so it yeah. could really mean anything yeah like or is it a bit of everything? I think it, it's, it's one of those things that's like it, it, it's developed over time, right? I've found what my style is and I've found what my writing approach is. And typically it comes from, I'll have an idea for a line, right? And I'll like, that's, that's a good line, mm-hmm. right? What does that mean? What does the music feel like? What, yep. does the, what is the music telling me? What, is it, what, 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 what emotions is it bringing out in me? Um, what sort of images is it bringing to my fucking brain? Do you have lyrics that... Have you got songs as in that you've wrote and there's no music yet? No. Yeah. It's very rare that I'll have like an entire song ready to go mm-hmm. by the time the music's done. It's typically I'll, I'll, you know, I'm listening to music or I'm listening to the telly or I'm listening to a podcast and something and somebody will hear, say a line and I'll hear it and I'll go, right, that's an earworm. I'm mm-hmm. going to grab that and I'm going to note it down and then I've got like notes upon notes upon notes and yeah. one-liners, you know, yeah. and then it's like, right, what am I going to, what does this do, can I expand on this and then start building out for that wee catalyst mm-hmm. and sometimes it will come together like overnight, it will be yeah. like it'll be, you'll go straight through like the last tune on the album, it was one writing session, just sat and just scrolled it out and it was like in the zone. it was almost like automatic writing man, it was just it just kept coming and I was mm-hmm. like no this is this is gold to me, <laughs> you yeah. know and then other ones it just it's struggled. annoying though that it you know. Why is it not like that all the time? Well, yeah, but always. sometimes you've got to work on it. Sometimes, yeah. for whatever reason, yeah. your yeah. mind is just somewhere that uh, it just works. But it's like you know, the come back to what you were asking about. Um, does anybody pay any attention or that? Uh, Andy, the drummer, he's he's always interested in you know what's the meaning behind the song and stuff like that. Because he does, he's a graphic designer by trade, so he does all the artwork. Yeah. Part so, of the reason I was asking yeah. was years ago when I was playing in a band. See how many times we've been in. Right, it's time to record the songs. Yeah. And you would, it would normally be kind of layered up. You do the music first, yeah. and the vocals are kind of done last. And see how many times the, voc- the, the, the vocalist would go in and start singing, mm-hmm. and someone would go, I didn't know that's what the lyric was. Well, I thought it was something else, because they're only used to hearing it in a, ba- in a practice or yeah. on stage where... Or not hearing it in a practice yeah. on stage. Aye, I yeah. didn't know they said that. Yeah. And, and we, we, we <laughs> they've been practice, playing it for a year. We pla- practice really loud, right? Yeah. To, to the point where I... Because Andy's a heavy hitter, right? So he, he batters the absolute shit out of the drums. So but that's order, styling music as well. To compensate for that, everybody else goes louder. And by the time, you know, that's happened, there's no much headroom left and, for the vocals. And your so, drums have melted. Aye, so the point, to the point <laughs> where I invested in, in years for practice, yeah. that I, I, I use them live now, but the original reason for getting them was for practice, because mm-hmm. I couldn't fucking hear myself and I was constantly hoarse. But, um, Did that take a bit of getting used to? Um, I've not used them myself. 
I very highly recommend them. You mm-hmm. start, you, you play better because you can hear yourself. Right. You know, and you perhaps, you know, when it comes to vocals, you don't push yourself as hard mm. um, because you can hear yourself. The majority of the damage you do when you're trying to sing live is you're, you can't hear yourself properly, I so mean, you're over exerting. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. very different style, but yeah. it's funny you say that because it's, it's the exact same thing. See, when I, when I first started singing, yeah. you know, I, I would play for an hour, yeah. like in here, yeah. right? I started doing Facebook Live yeah. du- during lockdown, that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah, doing. Yeah. And uh, that was my wee opportunity to kind of dip my toe yeah. in the water. And it was uh, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, oh. my voice would start to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, I was simply doing it wrong. Oh, that's it. And then over time, you get better. See, when you're playing the, the pubs, oh. it's three. you're playing three hours. Yeah. Nine till twelve. Yeah, and you can't right. do that. You can't uh, blow your so, voice so after hour one. I, yeah. I'm, you've, you've got to take care of your voice yeah. because you, I'm playing probably most gigs forty-five songs. Yeah, and keep in mind they're all edited down because I, I don't have a guitarist to do a solo. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, a lot of singing. Yeah, but see when you start when you set it up now, if, if you've got your, you used to have monitors back in the day, you could never hear anything out of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. See when you do gigs n- now, now I'm playing a, an acoustic. Yeah. And I've got a stomp box that yeah, I stomp yeah. on keep the, the, the time. Right. So when you can hear yourself, ah. you definitely don't belt it out as well, much. And you can, and you can yeah. actually hear a man tune here and ah. your, your voice is not yeah. strained, but rewind two years ago, I couldn't even do half a gig. Well, I think that's, that comes back to, like, just, you, you know, the amount of... Folk think singing's easy to a certain extent, you know what I mean? Because people are just naturally talented to do it, but there's a lot of technique that people don't understand, mm-hmm. you know? Um, or don't appreciate, you know, and it's more about, to me, it's like maintaining that sort of calm, you know, locking in all the right bits to do the job that you need to do and then just sell on the emotion, yep. you know what I mean? And even just like, see the, you obviously get used to playing, mm-hmm. singing the songs, yeah. so you get used to breathing. Yeah, aye. As in, right, I know I need to take a breath here because yeah. I've got this line to hit. Aye. I need to take a breath here because right. the next bit is going to yeah. be, you know. That's that's the main challenge that I've got there now is like because I'm doing a lot of the writing and the studio on the songs yeah. when it comes to playing them live. I'm like, I'm, I've left no space for breath. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like choosing, right? What what am I singing live? What am I not singing live? Do you, you know who comes up with the set list for the gigs? Um, it's, it's it's just general. We just uh, choose together collectively. You know, what's a good opener? Do, do you do it before the gig? Do you do the same set list? For each gig, um, it depends. I mean, depends it depends if you're promoting something. Well, maybe. that's exactly it. I mean, it depends if we if it's our gig, if it's just a sort of like a half hour support, you know, it'll be just songs that meet mm-hmm. half an hour. You know, if it's a head, if it's a headline that we put together that we're wanting, you know, to it's our show, if you like, mm-hmm. we'll try and make it a bit more like you know, not so much retrospective because we kind of don't really play many early tunes anymore because you've progressed, we've on, progressed from on a, a different. Not, not so much a different sound or a different style, but just like, Do you feel like your stuff were more it's mature. It's, it's more mature, yeah. essentially. Um, so, better written. So you've you done know. a lot, you've, you've been playing 10 years, so you will have done, I don't know how many gigs, yeah. right? Is there any, even now, that stand out that you go, that one, you know, is just above the rest? And I don't even mean that you've maybe played better, but is there certain gigs out of those 10 years that as a four or five that you go those one I, well, I mean we've, we've outstanding we've, we've been fucking lucky as fuck I know that you've managed to support some Aye. some good names big, big names um, and I suppose those one, those ones are the standout ones because they're the ones where it's like it's the next level up it's, it's, it's not even the next level yeah. up kind of thing I think it's just more along it's like kind of bucket list kind of stuff you know what I mean it's like you know we've played these venues that you've been to to see other bands, your heroes, for years you've for been years. standing in the audience. Aye, and it's like, it's that opportunity to stand on that stage. I mean, the the, the biggest one that we've done is we, we opened for Rob Zombie at the Academy in Glasgow and, and I wish I could go and play it now yeah. because when we got it, I probably wasn't as confident and comfortable in the band as I am now, mm-hmm. you know, performance wise and all that stuff. So. It's kind of a better pill because I watch videos of us doing it and I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but it's cringy as fuck, you know. That, that's when, maybe yourself though. But that's me, that's entirely yeah. me. If yeah. some, anybody else watches it, they'll probably be like, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I mean, um, but yeah, that 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 was that's up there as, as, a, as a pretty uh, big big deal. And how uh, do how do you how do you go about getting gigs like that? Have you got your own Jim Connolly? <laughs> no, no, we don't actually. You know, it's. Um, 
It, it's more is luck. It networking. It's networking. Aye, it's like people you know. So, so David, he's he's uh, worked in the sort of Glasgow music industry, if you want to call it that, for like the best part of twenty years. You know, he's been a doorman, he's been a showrunner, he's you know he's worked. Everything. He's he's now what he does professionally is rigging. Right. So like he, he he lifts the lights into the ceiling and stuff like that on all the big venues and the festivals and right, okay. that. So that's what he did. He's done that for a bit for as long as the band actually. It wasn't long after I joined the band that he started training for that. But it's good to so have somebody in that well, position. That's it. Yeah, so he's got he's got connections to promoters and stuff like that. And I think it it, it just comes along the lines of um, we were well thought of as. Right, there's a solid band that we can give this show to. They're not going to fucking embarrass us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aye. The Rob Zombie one, he didn't even want a support. He wanted a DJ. Right. You know, but it was like his tour manager and the uh, and the venue were like, you know, we all should. It's Rob Zombie. Should, we can't have a fucking DJ. Aye. People are wanting a band. And people will enjoy it. Well, yeah, that's well. that's it. So, um, so that's where that 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 one came out, and it was literally just like we'd done a couple of gigs with that that promoter. And they were like, yeah, that band's solid, we'll recommend them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've kind of we've landed on our feet with that um, several times, you know, yeah. I mean, with, with some of the bands that we've, that we've had the opportunity to support. So like. see, I had a wee look, on, I don't know if you've got more stuff, but I looked on iTunes, Yeah. right? So in the last, let's say, 10 years, I've got six singles, two EPs, one album. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more. Right? <coughs> no, that's pretty much it. Make two EPs, one album, yep. and six singles. Yep. <laughs> In the studio recording them. Yeah. How do you go about recording? So, for example, do you layer everything? So, do you get the drums down first? Yeah. And then add everything top, or do you? Use, is any of it done live? Yeah. So, I, so typically we'll try and we'll pre, we'll we'll do pre-pro before we even go anywhere near the studio. So we'll get. We'll finalise, we, we kind of self-produce, right? So we work with Stephen Jones um, at the minute. He, he's he's our go-to guy, he's fucking brilliant. He's, he's such a nice mm -hmm. such a nice guy and he gets us and he's really creative-minded and he's all about like what's the best for the tune. And that's the exact same approach that we took to it. So we'll, we'll kind of do all the legwork production-wise, get the, the structure of the tune bottomed out We'll roughly demo it out and MIDI drums and all that so sort of stuff. Pretty much 100% prepared for when you go in, because well, you're not wasting time Well, away. that's exactly that, because, you know, nobody, nobody's a millionaire, so we don't want to be wasting either his time, you mm -hmm. know, as we try and figure shit out, um, or, you know, our own time, because, yeah. you know, as you, as you know, time is money, etc., right? So we try and do all that up front and get it as, as close to being the finished article before we go in. Yep. And then we go in, sort of individually. It's typically, we'll go... Davy, uh, Garth, then Brown, then me. Right. So drums will be later. Um, the last few recordings we've been sort of doing sort of a bit, a bit more sort of structuring folks for mm -hmm. um, so, so even you're doing your vocals at the end. Yeah, right, so the music's all done. Yeah. Is there anybody else from the band that likes to come in with you to? I don't mean hold your hand, right? But yeah, I'm yeah. talking about guide you, try this, do a wee bit more well, of that's, that. that that's Is there somebody that's got an ear for that? Right. I mean, it's a me. I, th I don't think people realise having a producer, right. how important it is. They really are like, like the yeah. extra member of the band. Ah, yeah, yeah. But have you got a band member that, that, that likes to come in and help kind of guide you? No, if not needed? so much, yeah. I mean, we kind of... We kind of comfortable enough with each other, knowing what each other's going to do and what, what we're capable of, to the, we kind of just leave each other and, and do it and we do it individually and that role falls to Steve, so Steve's yep. pretty much, me and Steve work really well together man, it's like just bouncing ideas off each other and it's like, he's, his ears fucking fantastic because it's, it's like, having go like, that's not the one, go again, that's not the one, go again. It's, and it's like having go, somebody that's, that's Outside of the band, yeah, and that's it. But they're almost like they are part of the band at yeah. the same time. Aye, aye, aye. But for yeah. someone to say, you sound a wee bit tired there, Gav. Let, let's try that again. And Why don't you have a wee five minute rest? Aye. Why don't you, you know, you went somewhere there. Yeah. Why don't you do more of that? Like, mm, I'm not quite sure on that. Yeah, yeah, and it's always, you know, especially the the last couple of tunes we've not released them yet. But the last couple of tunes we did with Stephen uh, the end of last year, that was that's the least prepared I've probably been for a recording session and that the lyrics weren't finalised for a start of the tunes. Mm -hmm. um, and it was literally in the studio, sitting side by side going, that that line sucks, let's get something better. <laughs> yep. You know, and then the I ideas wise, 
we, me and him just sort of bounce ideas off each other and I'm like right does this melody work and he's like mm, no, I'll try this and I'm like right okay and then we go it's just that sort of uh, collaborative uh, bouncing ideas and there is a lot other. of uh, trial and error and yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no harm Let, let's try it yeah, yeah. it might work it might not work well, that's, I mean that's, that's always the approach we take to writing yeah. anyway is like you know just because it might not feel comfortable because you've never done it before doesn't mean you say it's shit mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah. so it's worth trying something different so here's one as well for you right so we're talking about all the different releases right I spoke about this earlier right when you were first getting into music you could buy an album yeah. simply based on the album cover. Yeah. I don't know the band, yeah. I don't know what any songs sound like. Yeah. To me, I still feel like artwork is very important. right? Yep. And, I, and I feel like when you've got an album, you've got to spend, I think you've got to still spend time getting the artwork correct. Yeah. right? Because you've got the front cover, you've got the inside, you've got the back, yeah. whatever it is. You put your obviously the, maybe the something on t shirts and all that yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. I f- still think that's really important. And yeah. then if you're releasing an album, yeah. you, we've got 10 songs, you can't just say there's the 10. No, yeah. You've got to start with this one, yeah. and then it's got to lead into this uh, one, and it's got to do this, and we've got to end yeah. on this one. Yeah. Whereas that is completely lost now uh, because of the way music has went. Because when you go, you stream it, yeah. download it from iTunes, you go, you go on YouTube, whatever yeah. it is. That's completely lost. But to a whole, yeah. I'd, I'd probably say probably from a, ourselves older, yeah. stuff like that is still really important. I yeah. would probably say we were the last generation before it kind of yeah. uh, I came got in lost. It up. Yeah, I, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just the sad fact. But is that did the you see what someone in the band does the design stuff yeah, for yeah, themselves? Yeah, the drummer. So Andy, he's a graphic designer. Right? Does he so, just love doing that is I that his thing I don't know if he loves it yeah. but, he, but how do you come compelled. up with a, but like for example right he, that's, that's, that's his sort of arena so he'll he'll go right uh, what's the tune what's the lyrics is usually what he starts with he goes yeah. right same with the lyrics and then he starts identifying stuff in the lyrics that he's like that you know sparks an idea yeah he then starts you know demoing some you know, ideas out, and he'll usually send a few variations, and then we'll feed back on it, and then he'll. And then, as a band, adjust. you just agree what you're feeling. Well, that's what exactly is, that's yeah, kind of yeah, how you do it. Yeah, yeah. and it's it, across all of the sort of design stuff. Um, that's kind of the way we approach. Same with the videos. So we self-produce all the videos and yep. stuff, and uh, it's that kind of thing. We'll come up with the concepts and you know try and implement them to the best of our ability. It's not always the case, Aye. but you know we do try. Yep. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, it is, it is important. It's that visual aspect is just as important as the music aspect, in my opinion. It's still selling your product, but you know we kind of get away from the fact that these games change. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the consumption of music is just bananas. You know, the, the access to music is insane. There's like forty thousand or even more tunes getting released every Friday. It, it's you weird. Know, it's weird because by um, it's so de- democratized that anybody can record music and anybody can put music. But when out we were growing up, right? You know, fifteen-year-old Gav sitting in his uh, house, right? You would never ever be able to hear a rock or metal band from um, San Diego. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Right? But now that you've got access to it. There's so much it almost gets lost anyway ah, it's because yeah, yeah. you can't find anything because yeah. there's just too much yeah. stuff out there. It's, ve- it's very few and far, far between. Which I'm I... guessing is probably why the live gigs are so important because you leave still people are still paying money to go to live gigs. Well, it's that, that, and then you I, leave an impression on someone. It's that meme that's going about. You know, it's like all, all bands are just travelling t-shirt salesmen, and that's essentially <laughs> because there's no yeah. money. There's no, no there's no real money in the game anymore for that side of stuff. Not that we are we, that we'd ever admit to being in the game to make any kind of money. It's, it's you know it's you know passion. yourself before before you reach any kind of level of success, it, the whole thing's a loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a passion that you just plough your money into because you. You need it. It's mm. like it's it's a visceral thing that that kind of feeds you you as a person, right? At least it is for me. You know, um, I happily piss money up the wall as long as I can continue to create stuff. Yeah. If somebody listens to it and engages with it and like connects with it, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. But if nobody listens to it, it's still for me a worthwhile product of my time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's something I feel I need to put out. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It's up to them. So, once you've recorded the songs, mm-hmm. 
Right, so say you've got an EP coming out, five songs, yeah. let's say. Right. See, once you spend all the time recording it, yeah. and that, do, do, do you listen to it afterwards? <laughs> and the reason I'm asking that, right, is yeah. I've released quite quite a bit, like, just yeah. my own stuff. And there'll be these eight songs in my head, yeah. right? And I'm like, I need to get them recorded. Yeah. I could spend a year yeah. recording it. Yeah. See, once it's complete, uh, very rarely do I then uh, actually go back to even listen to it. It's almost like I need to get them out of my head yeah. and captured on that's it, something, uh, but then I don't then need to, I can be years before I listen to them again. Uh, now, the, the difference being I'm not playing the band that has to then play the songs. Yeah. So usually by the time it comes to the end of the recording, right, the actual recorded version of the song, I absolutely fucking hate it because you've heard it that many times. Yep. And, it's, and then it's more about figuring out how to rediscover the song for the live set. It might, it might evolve a wee bit and in the live it, set. Yeah, I mean, there's there's things I do vocally live that I don't do on the records, but it's mm-hmm. like, damn it, I wish I'd done that on the record kind of thing. Yeah, you know what I mean, there's like wee sort of melodies I sometimes that think that, go down. that's interesting to but, hear. But that in itself, it's like one of the first albums I got was Maiden's uh, real live one, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yep. none of those tunes are like how they are on on the. I mean, they're tight as fuck, and they, they yeah. are the tunes. But, but they've evolved over they're time. They're not like they are on the original recordings. You yep. know what I mean? And that's part of the charm of it. You know what I mean? It's a unique experience, and that, yep. at least that's what a live show should be. You know, there's playing live and there's playing on the recording. You know, mm. the recording should be the best that it can be. The live thing's more about selling the energy and the experience. You know what I mean? It's funny you say that as well. Look, I, I noticed that therapy. Yeah. That we're talking about. I don't know if it was during lockdown or just maybe in the last couple of years. They went and re-recorded. Yeah. I don't know if they picked their fifteen favourite songs off all various albums. Oh, right, okay. Because the current lineup they've got has been in place for right. years and years yeah. now. They went back into the studio and re-recording their songs yeah. from Trouble Gum, songs from Nurse, yeah, Infernal yeah. Love, all this. Yeah. And uh, well, it's and, fu- it's and it's funny you say that because. Yeah. Personally, there's something I, I don't like about it because you you think of the songs that you yeah. loved when you were when yeah. you first discovered them. And you're them. that used to hearing them that way. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, there is something pretty cool as yeah. well about them going in and doing it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, fu- it's funny you mentioned that. I went to see Thrice the other night. Uh, they were doing like the, it was the 20th anniversary of their, their second album. Yeah, Artist and Ambulance, right? So they played the, the whole album and... and in, the, in its entirety, it was it was amazing. It was a great night, very nostalgic, right? But last year, was it last year or the year before? They they did the same thing. They re-recorded that whole album as a twentieth yeah. twentieth anniversary, um, you know, celebration. And I'm always joking with the boys. It's like, see, when it gets to ten years of our, our album, <laughs> we're we're getting it redone, yeah. you know, to so we can pump it out again. Because there's um, there's bits about it I would like to change. You know what I mean? Um, or, or, or at least tackle in a different way. But, um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's there's something about. It, it, I suppose you would maybe look back and go, "It'd be nice to re-record that. We can play better, probably sound better. The recording might sound well, better." That's it, yeah, but yeah. It, there's also something quite nice about we've done it. Aye, but and, aye, yeah. So that was it, your original is, question. It is what so it is. Aye, I went doing a, I went doing an alleyway there. Um, yeah, your original question. Did I listen to the tunes? No. No, very very seldomly. Sometimes I'll, I'll have a night where I'm feeling a bit nostalgic, and I'll go back just check it out and go, is it still as good as I remember it being, or is it still? Or, or, is it, or, or do you just go back and go? Just, I should have changed that. I should yeah. have been that different. Yeah, I, 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 both. I, I probably never really go. Nah, maybe the EPs I'll go back to and go. Fuck! I wish I'd done that different. I wish yeah. I'd done that better. But then that's why you get to do it live. Well, that's exactly it. Yeah, you can change yeah, it. Yeah, but the um, yeah, very seldomly. I mean, if. Emma, my wife, she listens to it more than I do, and if it comes on the car, I normally skip it because yeah. it's like there's nothing like it's like self-relating to listen to yourself and go. Yeah. It's funny you do, you yeah. say that. I, I can't remember. It was last year. I was somewhere, and it was like there was loads of family. Yeah. I don't know what it was that was on, but for some reason, yeah, there was music playing, and one of my songs came mm. on, and I was just like, "Fucking skip this." I was yeah, like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I do. It, the song was fine. Yeah. Recording wise, it yeah, was okay, yeah. but I do not. It's, it's like, why would you want to sit and listen to yeah. yourself? It's like you, you know, get like film directors and actors and stuff that it's like, right, that project's done now. I don't, like, I don't need to go back and do that. It's like, actors would don't you, like watching themselves. Yeah, would you like to go back and watch like a year's worth of your work, your working life? No, you wouldn't. You know what I mean? That's done now. That's a chapter. Then they might be the, the first time. Yeah, exactly. Watch it's again. like you know the the stuff that matters is the stuff that's going forward. So yeah. I. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, and I don't mean that as any disrespect, because there will be people who like those songs and stuff. It's, like it's that. nice it's to fine. maybe, yeah. as you say, every few years you'll maybe just pop it on or you'll hear it, but yeah. certainly not. Maybe if it's just you in the car, yeah, something like that. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't put it on in front of people. No, no, I hear that when it's <laughs> So, last question for you, right. ready? Right. Mount Rushmore. Right. You've got. Who is your Mount Rushmore for, whether it be an artist, solo artist, bands, who are the four that you put at the top of the pile for yourself, Jeez. whether it be songwriting, whether it be performance, whether it be the overall package, who are the four at the top of your pile in no particular order that you, for you, that is it? Jesus. Uh, I'd go Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. Yep. Um, Maynard James Keenan, Tool, Puss for Brother Brother. Um, oh no, man, now you. Uh, I'm probably with Freddie Mercury, David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, like, <laughs> Freddie Mercury for, for the, uh, the influential frontman, not, uh, there's never been. Front man like him, and never ability, writing, just, writing ability, just performance wise, just just a, just a legend. To a league of his own. Aye, aye completely. Um, and he had a moustache. Bowie for the <laughs> Bowie for the creativity man. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've ever been so upset like when somebody had actually died. You yeah. know what I mean? Like from music. Yeah. You know, we've been plenty of deaths through the through years. Music, you've got your Kurt Cobain's and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But Bowie was like a knife through the heart, man. I don't know why exactly. I think it's just he'd always been there. It's just a shame seeing somebody that's that creative. Well, that's that, it. Yeah, they're gone, and, and it's not been like through self-destruction. Yeah, yeah. Aye, it's, it's just, just life. Just, yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. It's just chronic. But um, yeah, that that was a that was a dark day. Um, and even still, okay, you know, you look at that back catalogue of work, and you're just like, how 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 is that possible? To be consistently good through so many fucking years, you know. It's and the fact that he re constantly re reinvent re himself, yeah, reinvent yeah, himself, yeah. and yeah, you, I'm not a massive Bowie fan, oh, mate. but there's no denying you, you can't deny yeah. the influence that he has had yeah. and the, to last that long. Yeah, I mean, there's there's certain eras that I don't connect with as much as as, as others, but like you know, the sort of life on Mars kind of lad insane kind of eras. So you don't uh, like him dancing in the streets with Jagger? I mean, it's fun. <laughs> It's fun, it's a good tune. It's, even, it's, it's even more tune. fun if you mute but, it. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a good tune, but um, you know, that, that, that kind of 80s sort of uh, yuppie kind of era, I wasn't, it didn't connect with that as much. But especially towards the end of these days, man, when we start doing that sort of more arty, experimental, you know, noise type stuff, it was, yeah. Yeah, that was right up my street. And like his earlier sort of Ziggy Stardust stuff and that, it's just like proper good rock yeah. songs. But even like, like all these sort of more acoustic y, Type stuff is, is great as well, but yeah, no, nah, he, he was a big, he was a big loss, man. Um, but yeah, and, and Trent Reznor, he's just a fucking genius, man. Just like a songwriting yeah. genius. Um, yeah. Gav, yes. thank you for coming on. Cheers, mate. Nice Until next time. time. Yeah, I and uh, I'll make sure I come along to a gig at some point. Sorry, welcome. I was just before, just before we log off as well. Twenty third of March. Yes. You're playing Scotland's Rock Radio Live and Louder, yeah. Banshee Labyrinth in Edinburgh. Indeed. Yeah. So, should be good. how do you get tickets if anyone's want to come hey, along? ScotlandRocksRadio.com. I think all the sales. Is there links on that. your? I think there is links on there's your links, Facebook, links social in, media, and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. There's links in there. That reminds me, I need to do another sort of. So punt. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to check that out. Yeah. You might see me uh, waving at you. Yeah, you're in more the more audience. Welcome, more and uh, it'll be good. But thanks be for good. coming on. No, thank you, mate. Thanks <laughs> for having us. Good seeing you again. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Cheers.